Hi there, this is May Blythe and I'm here for a new tutorial. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you the easiest way to make textures for 3D models for the hair. Um, I was looking at these models and they had the most beautiful hair textures and I was just thinking like, how did they do that? That looks so difficult. Well, I found it out. So let's start by opening a new um, file. What I almost always use for my textures is 2400 pixels by 2400 pixels. Depending on how much you care about how high quality your textures are, you can go lower, but I'm not sure if you can go higher with MMD in specific. So let's open this. Now, the first thing is that I like for there to be um, a little transparency at the bottom to just look more natural. So let's turn off the background, which has no transparency. So let's start and we'll select a good area of it and leave the bottom transparent. And let's make some blue hair. Now you can photo um, paint and bucket this in instead of using a gradient. I just like using gradients. All right, so I picked the two colors, click here, pick it, switch, click here, pick it, and then let's pull out the gradient tool and go up bitty down bitty. All right, now let's go to filter, noise, add noise, make sure to click monochromatic because if you don't pick monochromatic, it has little rainbow flex. Now, let's click OK. And let's um, deselect filter, um, blur, motion blur, and make sure that it's set to 90 degrees and how far away it is um, determines how hair-like it is. So basically you can mess with the settings but you want to make sure that everything looks up and down, up and down like hair. You don't want too much transparency at the bottom though. Now this basically does look a lot like hair but is there something a little wrong with it? So let's select everything, copy, paste, and let's set this to overlay so the strands of the hairs look a little nicer, more defined, but we could also change it to screen, multiply, it looks a soft like, you get it. It looks like overlay is our best option. Now that we have that, we can make this a clipping layer. Oh, sorry, I'm still new to Photoshop. Anyway, we want to add a bit of dark to the top and bottom, the roots and the ends. So let's just pick random brush and just add this. After we add this, let's add a blur, Gaussian blur, and that'll give it a nice um, natural look. Now let's switch it to overlay, and you'll probably notice up here, I just left it looking pretty bad. For anything like MMD, you can't just plop a texture in. You have to UV map it first, so I'll just ignore that in my UV maps. Alright, now that we have the shadow in, let's add an extra highlight. Clipping mask. And I don't like using white for... Let's make it a little blue. And let's just go straight across. And 
and use a blur again. Now you're probably wondering why that didn't look like straight up white and you could see the background behind it. That is because layer 2 is set to overlay and it's a clipping mask. So these are kind of... Okay, let me regroup. Okay, let's set this to normal. When you set it to normal, you can see that the blue is kind of blocking out well, the blue is blocking out the stuff behind it more, and the white, I, the light highlight I just added is blocking out what's behind it too. Move this back to overlay, and you can see that the white isn't blocking anymore because it is on a clipping group for an overlay layer. Anyway, once you have it like this, you can be done with it. There's more stuff you can do though, like, for example, let's add some light purple highlights. And let's pick a better brush for this. No. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, okay. I have a really twitchy hand. So the best way to do it is to click and then shift and click again. And now it has some purpley highlights. Let's blur it, Gaussian blur, so that it doesn't look as, you know. And let's, and after adding that, let's go to color. Well. Hue. Basically, when you're doing stuff like this, all you can do is mess around and see what looks cool and what you like. So if we set it to overlay, it's a little bright. If we set it to hue, it's muted, saturation, it's brighter, color. You get the point. So anyway, you can add streaks of color like that. No, not what I wanted. I'm just using shift and click to make sure it's in a nice little line. And I'm going to add some more color here. More color here. And let's use blur, Gaussian blur just to make it less, you know, obvious. And by the same token, you can make a new one and you can just add um, highlights and lowlights. So let's say that this is a highlight. wanted that far down. And again, we can turn this one to screen so that it's brighter. And we can go to blur, Gaussian blur. We'll leave the highlights a little more intact than the color. And then let's add a low light. in a new layer that will set to probably multiply. Doop. 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 And we'll set this to either multi not color brand. Multiply or overlay. Because we want it as a bit of low light, let's choose overlay, blur, Gaussian blur. And yeah, that looks pretty cool if I do say mo so myself, but it's a little harsh. So let's tone it down a bit. And here is 
it's not very realistic, but for the amount of work that went into it, it's pretty realistic. Maybe uh, copy paste. Maybe we could lighten. I don't know. You can play with the layers. I copy and pasted the bottom layer to see if I could, yeah, make the strands a little more pronounced. We can go to adjustments, brightness contrast, up the contrast. so that the hair strands are a little more pronounced. Anyway, this was a video on the quickest way to make a realistic, I'm using air quotes so you can't see, hair texture. In my next video, I will show you how to use Blender to UV map the hair so that you can slap this on it and look more realistic.